1990 Pearl Export in Ferrari Red. This kit was probably the most common kit I recall seeing through the 90s. Um, it was also pretty pretty common in the 80s, but that would be the split lug design. This is the, uh, the three-piece lug or faux high-tension lug. Um, this kit's also in Ferrari Red. But this and this are connected by a small piece of metal in there. Um, I've heard that these come loose. I've not seen it myself. I'm sure if you drop them or any number of things, it's just a piece of bent metal uh, being held in by two small pins that are part of the casting. Um, when I clean this kit up, some of those were bent, uh, I think from people over tensioning stuff. Um, I actually, now in hindsight, I actually like these kits. During the era, I was not a fan. Um, I wanted a Tama kit more than anything. Uh, my buddy in junior high and high school had one of these kits in this exact color with these same symbols. Um, not the 18 though. Um, I'll get to the symbols in a minute. But um, I think uh, this, this kit came from Skip's Music uh, in 1990 in Sacramento, California. Um, uh, it was bought for me recently by my wife for me from a coworker of hers who was selling it. He has an electric kit now and didn't want his acoustic kit anymore and it was just sitting in the garage. So I cleaned it all up and here it sits. The wrap's kind of in poor shape. There's some bubbling and stuff going on. You can see the little saggy um, parts in there. And then also it's delaminating down here. Um, I used a heat gun to kind of lay it back out some, but it needs to be rewrapped. But wrap, to be honest, is gonna cost about as much as this kit's worth. Um, which is odd because my buddy had this kit with just the 16 and, eight and 20 inch ride with the 14 inch hi-hats, the same shell configuration though. And his grandparents and parents paid about $1,300 for an export with the symbols, with the additional boom stand. And uh, yeah, $1,300 today could get you an awesome kit. This was the price of admission drum set in 1990. Um, they didn't have anything lower until the forum came out a couple years later. Um, this kit did feature a couple little upgrades like the high tension, faux high tension lugs. Um, and also they put a ply of birch inside. So the shell does have one ply of birch with the grain going across. Whereas all the rest of the shell is nine ply uh, Philippine mahogany or Luan. And the ply, the good grain goes up and down like all of the other Japanese and Taiwanese imports of the day. Um, metal, metal hoops, thin metal rims. Um, later on, these drums came with the uh, ISS or IMS, whatever you want to call the the mount, and uh, they were bending these hoops because they're so thin um, uh, because they mounted, you know, up here instead. Um, me, everybody always talks about getting isolation mounts. This drum set, um, especially the bass drum, um, you want to mute it up right now. It's got a muffle on it. It's as dead as can be. But like the toms, everybody's like, oh, I need to isolate mount the toms. And then you put pinstripes on it, or you put moon gel with emperors, or um, Evans with the, um, with the little deadening strip ring around the inside. That makes no sense to me. It's like we want it as resonant as possible, and then we're going to deaden it out. Um, I know you can reverse it by taking the heads off, but to be honest, these mounts don't kill the tone that much. Um, I don't like them for other reasons, like that, where they start to move because the pins loosen up. Um, the fact that they'll never be symmetrically set up because one sags and one doesn't, and if you're OCD about getting your tom straight, they just won't be straight. Um, even though mathematically it seems like the the tilters and everything should be able to set up right. They don't. <laughs> um, uh, but, you know, it had the, for its day, it had a lot of little things like the convertible rubber to spike tip, um, molded, molded plastic for the uh, feet instead of just slip on rubber. Um, the wing screws on everything kind of matched up. Pearl in this era was really cool. I think this is 800 series hardware. You've got the, you know, proprietary logos on all the castings, which was really cool for the time. Um, you know, you 
got the, you can barely see it there, for all written on there. The wing screws on the tom mounts don't have it, and neither do the, uh, the ones on the bass drum there, and the wing screw on the floor tom is just kind of plain Jane. But pretty smart looking kit for the era. I like that everybody's drum sets had certain design elements. Uh, later on, this was sold off to uh, Ludwig, I think, did a design just like that, but without a hinge. They had like a little tooth section there. Um, the Unilock tilter with the logo on it as well. Um, okay. Some pretty cool stuff for that era. Um, so nostalgia puts it way up for me, especially since Pearl's hardware kind of got, it got heavier and cheaper um, into the 90s and 2000s. Um, but, I mean, this era, just with the big, huge honking boom section, and you can actually add this to any straight stand. So this portion here could just fit in here and be a straight stand, or you can add this little boom and the little end on there and make it into a boom stand. That's kind of a cool upgrade for your straight stands. Because if I was playing with this as a four-piece kit, I wouldn't really have boom stands on it, except for maybe out of the uh, bass drum mount. Um, even the pedals, you know, for the hi-hat and bass drum pedal matched up. Um, it's a chain, chain drive pedal, so this was better than the strap drive that they had in earlier versions. Looks like some mousies got to those uh, to that beater there. Um, and then um, the hi-hat stand actually, later on they had a rotating uh, bass, and this one is actually cast into there. My buddies that in junior high had the same drum set and uh, it had a little lock ring here and that allowed that to turn. Still has hi-hat uh, tension adjustment there. Um, snare drum with the actual proprietary throw off. Pretty cool. No, no muffling on the snare drum or toms. They just kind of let that go, which was cool because most, most of the time people ran them open or just dead in the heads out. Um, symbols on this kit are uh, Zildjian Scimitar Bronze. They actually look like they say Bronze Scimitar, but they're known as Scimitar Bronze in their catalog. This is the earlier version. Um, it's 14 inch hi-hats, 16 inch crash, uh, an 18 inch crash, which is pretty darn rare, and a 20 inch ride. So usually you got the, just the, the starter pack, and then I guess he ordered the, the extra crash 18, which is actually really cool. But this early version is not lathed underneath. It's just smooth underneath, which looks really cool, but the cymbals sound thicker, re react a little slower and a little more gongier. So the later scimitar bronze with the uh, with the uh, writing uh, bronze in the kind of a script um, logo is uh, a little better. They're laid on the bottom. They, they open up a little quicker. And they, just, they just sound thinner and a little nicer. Um, Later on, Export did the Export Pro with the black hoops. Um, they never put 10 lugs on the bass drums. You could check, maybe they did on 24s, but that's one of those things that always I always spot that looks makes a kit look cheapest. Chrome hoops and eight lugs on the bass drum. Any drum set in the world you look at, unless it's a 20 inch bass drum, eight lugs on a 22 inch bass drum always looks cheap. Um, also these stands, um, the the lowest tilter section is really tall. So like the ride symbol, you can see no matter what, that's not gonna get as low as the floor tom. And I know I sit kinda low, but still, that's, that's really <laughs> crazy. Um, but this has factory heads on the bottom and pinstripes on top. I think these are the heads that the guy originally bought for the kit when he got it new. Um, and he also had a Gibraltar uh, Power Series rack for it too, which I'm not mounting with it because I actually like the single brace hardware. It's like as heavy as you need it to be. There's not really a need to go double braced for this stuff. Um, this, st this stuff is actually pretty heavy for, for what I'm used to using. I, I like to use uh, Ludwig um, flat base mounts. So anyway, I'll give, get, let you get a hear of the, the sound the sound of the kit and I will probably do a review of it after I put some heads on it or maybe I wrap um, the tom and 
or not, the floor tom and bass drum that I have for it too. I also have a, another um, another 22 and an 18 inch floor tom, but it's not the right finish. It's a midnight blue, I think, or midnight ocean or deep ocean. I can't remember all the color names anymore. But um, but yeah, I'm gonna play it and let you hear what it sounds like. Surprisingly good sounding kit for all this, you know, toms entering the hard or t hardware entering the toms and all that stuff. Um, the bass drum I don't like this is my least favorite thing about it because of the muffle I think so I'd like to do a review with with uh, you know maybe power strokes or something like that or something a little more open at any rate here we go snare drum open first and no no ring on it with the mute ring on it it's kind of a rock snare drum not really sensitive not really great for any ghost note stuff 10 by 12 tune up they're really cheap so, um, 11 by 13 16 by 16 13 and 16 are awesome together by 22 with that muffle in there and it does have a pinstripe but the front head doesn't give any resonance with that big hole cut in it and it's just really not a resonant drum head even when you take it off and tap it it just doesn't have any life to it so I'm sure if I put an impact pad on it and a wooden beater it would have a really good 90s uh, metal sound you know that tick 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 inch high hats Place them. 